Hello book nerds and welcome back to Ray Reads. My name is Ray and today we are going to have a quick wrap up of what I read during the 2020 reading rush. Now I didn't do a TBR for the reading rush because I didn't actually decide to do it until uh, halfway through the afternoon on the Monday. So if you don't know what the reading rush is, um, I'll stick a couple of links back down below. But the idea is that um, over seven days you try to read as many books as possible. There's a badge for hitting seven books. There's a badge for hitting over a thousand pages. And you have to read books that tick off certain specific other challenges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the challenges and tell you what I read for them. Uh, this isn't necessarily what I read in order because I didn't do the challenges in order. So... Uh, we'll go for challenges first, so let me just get the list up behind. So the first challenge is to read a book with a cover that matches the colour of your birthstone. So I was born in December, and the birthstones, there's three different birthstones, basically they're all blue. So I picked up Jonathan Livingston Seagull, uh, which has a lovely blue cover. This is the complete edition, which includes the Rediscovered Part 4 it's by Richard Buck, um, and it's a bit of a, it's sort of a fable, it's a bit, it's described as a classic, it's definitely philosophical, um, I'm not sure when it was originally published, but this, like, rediscovered version was, came out in 2013, so I'm not sure how much older, oh, uh, 1972, so, yeah. So between 1972 and 2013, 2014, there were only three parts to this. This is the part, this is the version with the fourth part that he stuck in a drawer somewhere because he thought it was rubbish. But having read it with the fourth part, I'm not sure. I think it, it gives it a little bit more closure than just stopping at the third part. Um, so yeah, that's what I read for challenge one. Challenge two was read a book that starts with the word the. I read The Gravity of Us, which is actually the first book that I read. Um, and I was halfway through this one and decided, oh, okay, I'll actually just do the challenge. Um, I'll do the reading rush. This is by Phil Stamper. Um, you will have seen this in one of my book hauls. This is a YA romance. Um, it's a male-male romance, as you can see on the book cover um it's about two teenage guys whose lives are sort of upturned when their parents get accepted to the nasa space program which will be sending people to mars um and there's a lot more in it than just romance um there's a lot in there to do with fame and family and mental health and grief and all sorts so I thought this was really good I gave this uh, four out of stars four out of stars four out of five stars and for reference I think I gave this four out of stuff four out of five stars as well the next is read a book that inspired a movie which you have already seen so I read The Curious Case of Benjamin Button the st story the written story by F. Scott, Fitzgerald, F. Scott Fitzgerald is actually quite different to the film. Um, Benjamin Button, the character in this, is a bit of an arse. Um, he wasn't as sympathetic as a character as in the movie. Um, there's, a, there's basically the only thing that's the same is the ageing backwards part. Um... I only gave this two stars because the Benjamin Button story is the only interesting thing about the book. There's three short stories in here. The other two are absolutely dull and boring and terrible. Um, the Benjamin Button story was okay. Um, but as I say, the film is way better. So this got two stars. Uh, the next I... The next challenge is the first book you touch. So for this, I did something slightly different and I got a selection of books that I thought I would like to read, um, put them on the floor and then I dropped a feather from um, 
above and whichever one the feather landed on that would be the book that I read and feather landed on this is probably going to be quite difficult to see because it's a bit of a poorly contrasted title it's in defense of english cooking by george orwell as you can see this is even tinier than the benjamin button book uh, this is a short series of essays which includes his essay notes on nationalism which um i believe is quite well known and the prevention of literature which um discusses freedom of the press and freedom of thought and that sort of thing um, this was very obviously some of these essays were written in during the um, interim period between the two world wars some of them very obviously written during the war the second world war or potentially very shortly after it um, it wasn't published until they, I don't believe they were all published until the 80s. Um, this particular edition was published in 2005. Um, so I can't remember. I think I gave this four stars. Um, if I didn't, I will correct myself in the future editing, Ray. Um, it was a bit... It was interesting and also a bit depressing as to how relevant all this in this book is still today despite how many decades have come and gone so the next two books were ebooks so i don't have anything to hold up for you so the first well the fifth challenge is read a book completely outside of your house so i read artificial condition which is the second murderbot diaries novella book um, by martha wells i read this entirely in my back garden um I opted to go for this and I opted to specifically go for an ebook because I tend to go a lot quicker on the Kindle than I do with paper. I don't know why, it just happens that way. Um, so I read that and that I gave four stars. Um, in the second book, Murderbot is, uh, it follows on pretty much directly from the end of the first book. Murderbot is trying to figure out what exactly happened in the past that earned it the name Murderbot. So he goes to, well, I say he, it was narr narr narrated by a man on the audiobook for the first um, book, which is how I consumed that. Um, so in my head, it's sort of put him as being a he, even though... Technically, Murderbot doesn't have a gender and doesn't even have sex organs, so... He's an it, it's a he, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so Murderbot goes back to this mining uh, planet where he previously was stationed, where 57 humans got killed and trying to figure out whether it was him who did it consciously, whether he was hacked, whether... Hacking his governor module to make himself into a free agent is what caused the murdering -ness, or whether it was something else. Along the way, he picks up a few new clients in order to get a work pass to get down there. Um, he gets invested in those clients and wants to help them when they're kind of in the shit. Um, and he also meets a friend, which is, well... They don't describe each other as friends, but you can tell from the way they're like bouncing off each other that they're definitely friends. Called Art, which is short for arsehole, no, asshole, I suppose, research transport. And Art is a research transport who has a super AI brain, which is very rare and unexpected. Um, but Art helps out Murderbot to look more human, to look after his clients down on the mining thing, uh, the mining planet, moon, and to try and figure out what happened to him back before his memory was purged. 
So I gave that four stars, which I think I've already mentioned, and I apologise now if the light has just gone very bad. Um, it's decided to start raining outside. It was sunny when I started. Such is British summer. Oh well. Um, number six, challenge number six, is read a book in a genre that you've always wanted to read more of. So I tell a lie when I said the next two were ebooks. It's M Murderbot and then num challenge number seven is going to be an ebook. But this one is Reality is Not What It Seems by Carlo Rovelli, which is a non fiction, science, physics y book. Um, it's The Journey's Quantum Gravity, which I know, n n well, now I know next to nothing about, but previously knew nothing about. Um, I knew that there are gravitational waves because that was a discovery fairly recently, four years ago, um, in 2016, and it involved somewhere that I work or worked at the time. Um, so this is what I picked up for a genre I'd like to read more of. I would like to be able to read more science, non-fiction, particularly in the sort of physics, metaphysics crossover um, I know metaphysics is the philosophical side of things, but I think when you come to start having titles that say reality is not what it seems, you're going to hit on some metaphysics along the way. Anyway, um, this really slowed me down in my reading stats because it was dense. And I don't know what I expected other than dense because it's about quantum gravity, so... But hey, it was really interesting to track my stats over the week. So in the first couple of days, I read well over 200 and something pages on Monday and Tuesday. Then it started to fall off. And then I think the day I read the least was when I was just trying to finish this one off. Um, but hey, I still enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of a five. And I thought it was very sort of inspirational and enlightening. And... Although I may only have absorbed like 70% of the science, um, I think that's more just because my brain needs to try and, and it's getting very rainy now, my brain needs to reread difficult bits more than once to get the other 30% of the info. But it was very, very interesting. And so, number seven. Challenge number seven was read a book that takes place on a different continent than where you live. I think being British in the UK or on the European continent, this is fairly easy because, let's face it, there are a lot of books that are set in America. So I did not read something that was set in America purposefully. I read something that's set on the African continent. It is set in Nigeria, and that is Black Sunday by Tola Rotimi Abraham. This is one of the ones that I think I have mentioned as... Um, being on my TBR at some point. Um, this was actually an advanced reader copy. I believe the book is now out, or it will be out in the next couple of weeks. This looks at <clears throat> two, well, the, the blurb says it looks at two sisters, but really you're looking at the four, the all four children of this family, two of which are twin sisters who are the older children, and then their younger brothers, um, who are Peter and Andrew. And what happens to them after tragedy strikes, their mum loses her job, which their dad's job was highly dependent on, and then he gambles away all of their money, including their house, and gets conned by the new church. Um, and then the mum goes off to America to try and make some money, um, but they never hear from her again. And then the dad's like, OK, dumps all the kids on his mother who lives in a really poor neighbourhood in Lagos and he disappears. So then it's the story of how these four kids try to survive parentless in Nigeria in a society that's quite sexist still um, and there's a lot of... Uh, it's It's quite depressing but also it's Kind of, some of it was kind of really, like, m made me angry um, because of how badly, like, this Christian church ruined this these people's lives and keeps ruining other people's lives throughout the book. Um, and yet, you know, 
because it's Jesus. They're okay. They don't get told off. They don't get punished. Nothing happens. Um, and the girls struggle to find jobs. They don't finish school. They struggle to find jobs so they can get their brothers back into school so that they can have better lives than them, even though there's not that much difference between them in age there's like maybe three years difference between the twins and their oldest younger brother um yeah I think having having thought about the book at the end I was kind of disappointed because it well didn't end the way I thought it was going to um and it seemed a little bit um damp not really damp like just a bit flimsy um but then I had a th- I, s- I sat down and I thought about it and I was like okay actually there's a lot more in this book that's very very subtle um so it it's a bit of a weird one to have to try and de- try and describe um it's it was definitely a book that when you sat there and you thought about it afterwards more things kind of made sense and revealed themselves and there was a lot of like subtle messaging and um that sort of thing that when I sat there and thought about it I actually went oh okay no maybe it maybe it is doing what I wanted it to do maybe it has served the purpose that I was hoping it to serve um I gave it three in the end out of five uh Purely because, I don't know, literary fiction is not really my thing. Contemporary literature, literary fiction, that sort of thing is not really my thing. But it was still a good story. It was still entertaining. It could be improved in some ways. Um, But, hey, there you go. That was my seventh challenge done. And just to round it off, um, I finished those seven challenges by the end of Saturday. So I had Sunday to do some extra reading. So I didn't finish this, but I started and got through half of The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison, which is one of my must-reads for the year. So I I won't talk about that particularly much because it's not part of the uh, reading rush. I did count the 200 pages that I read towards the reading rush, so on the chart that I flashed up earlier... The 200 pages on the Sunday was just that, basically. Um, So that was my Reading Rush 2020. That's the first time I've ever done it. Um, I did have fun. I've kind of lagged in the middle. Um, I did find watching my stats going up and down to be quite interesting. I, as I said, I got some of the extra badges, so... Because I read over a thousand pages, I got the that badge, and because I've read seven books, I got that badge. Um, I think I ended up with one thousand two hundred ninety-five pages that I finished. I have certainly read more pages in a week previously, but I've only ever managed to do that with uh, bigger books, and I only that would be like across four books maybe, um, and I've only managed to do that twice. So. Yeah, I did enjoy it. Um, I probably, if I want to do it next year, should be a little bit more organised about it. But my problem is I'm very much a mood reader, so the idea of filming a TBR and then actually sticking to it is intimidating. Um, So, as I say, that was that. I hope you're enjoying the progression of lockdown hair that's going on right here. And I will see you next time, which will probably be a July... A whole July wrap up or a July book haul video because I I have no self control. That's the end of that. Mm-hmm. So like and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, please feel free to share, comment below if you did the reading rush too. What did you read? How far did you get? What what was your favourite challenge? Um, and I will see you next time. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.